that's the best thing that you can see, honestly, is um, the little ones participating in their church. We had um, 10 last night, um, the youth um, here at the church, and um, and it was good, and actually the, the they had a lot of fun, um, but we also learned a scripture and um, but one of the one of the girls came to me and said, um, "Hey, I didn't because someone got a prize, right? Every time if they could, if they could recite that scripture, right? I'm trying to put it in their brain above all else. Um, they got gift cards, and so um, one afterwards told me, "Hey, I just I didn't know that scripture because I've never gone to church." And I was like, well, you know what? That is awesome that you were here, right? Like, that's okay. Like, and so that's really where it's at, yeah. right? That's right. that's the whole point of what we do, um, is so that people have an opportunity to know Jesus. Yes. I mean, that's it, right? And um, they'll only know it through us. Every single kiddo who came was because they were personally invited and knew one of our kiddos. Yeah. People are not going to come because. Oh, there's an event, or there. It's because we are personally walking with them, knowing them, talking to them, and have access to them. Um, and that's discipleship, right? And so it was really good. Um, I'm exhausted, to be honest. <laughs> I told Scott last night, I was like, I need someone who has the energy to do this um, more, because it's a lot of work. But it was it was really good. Um, <clears throat> but this is all the voice I have, so y'all bear with me. Um, also, something else while we're talking about good news is, um, and we haven't like officially announced this because I'm not sure, just y'all be praying, praying about this, is after next Sunday, Junior will be with us here almost every Sunday. Um, we have pastors who we've been uh, talking to and, and walking with a little bit and leadership has been walking with um, that will, uh, will next Sunday start being in Columbus every Sunday. Um, eventually hoping that then on Tuesdays they'll be coming to Bible study too um, and and that will help so much yeah. because we don't lose anything here like you still does all that he's gonna do and so other areas <laughs> other areas fill in right and so um, I think that will be a, a great really great and really excited for them um, y'all met them they were here last week um, they were at the shoe distribution in Columbus so they've been coming alongside of us and and doing things um, mm -hmm. just to kind of see where they're at. So, yeah. oh yes, kiddos. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to keep them. <clears throat> so this morning, I am going to share with you. Um, and like I said, Junior, uh, next week, Sylvester being with us. Um, because Junior will be there with the uh, pastors, uh, being there with them on their first Sunday. Um, I mean, they've been on Sundays, but um, they'll be being there. So um, today I get to be with you and share with you. And uh, I was thinking about this, and I mean, there's so much to share. But, you know, a few weeks ago I shared about the letters in Revelation to the church um, about God being our first love. And um, so we talked about that. And I think this is pretty much kind of going on the side of that and talking about how we do that. Um, we know we're supposed to do it, right? I think every single one of us felt convicted, and that myself included, um, about how we're to love God with um, as our first priority, um, right? Because that kind of gets bogged down. But today I want to just go on the side of that and talk about how we do that, what that looks like, um, right? Because it's... One thing to say, I love God, and I know I'm supposed to put that before all things, but what does that actually look like in our lives, right? Give us some practical instruction. Um, we do all the things, right? We do the, the, the outreaches. We do the, um, the serving others. We, did, we gave 188 pair of shoes. If y'all were not there, 188 pairs of shoes to Columbus um, wow. last Saturday. Um, and it was a whole different people group than was here. It, it was just so neat. Um, so we do all those things, and that's a part of loving others, right? It's a part of the Great Commission. We're supposed to do those things. Um, but the foundation of loving others and all the things we do is only can only come out of loving God. 
There is no way, there is no way none of us would have been chasing those kids yesterday if we didn't love the Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? It's, it's our, it's, it's, it's the motive behind it, right? Okay, here's someone who, need, who needs to know Jesus. Here's someone from, who doesn't have parents or doesn't have, you know? And so it has to come out of loving God. And that's what builds the church, is, is actually our love for God, right? Not other people's love for God. It's our love for God. That's what grows and builds the church, um, because we're the church, right? Amen. It'll cause us to disciple people. It'll cause us to bring people in. It'll cause us to um, to minister to others. It'll cause us to do all the things that need to be done. Um, so it's your personal love for God. And God is relational. God is relational. I mean, even how he set himself up, right? Three and one. He's not a taskmaster. He does not want... He's not... One who just says, like, do this. And I think, honestly, a lot of, like, the younger generation, like, uh, probably all generation back there, because I have a kiddo that's included in that age, is I think we grow up thinking, like, we don't go to church because, well, God, it's just a list of things that we can't do. That's, that's how it's seen. That's, God is not like that. No. God is relational. He, God is like, I want to be with you. I want to be close to you. I want to know you. I want your best interest in mind. That's the only reason he says, do not do anything, is because, like, I want it to go well with you, the scripture says, right? And so he's a very relational God. He's, he's a God who feels compassion. He's a God who gets angry. He's a God who gets jealous. I mean, think of all these emotional attachment, like, words, right? God is very relational. He wants to know you. Um, and so... Um, that's why the greatest command, commandment. Who knows the greatest commandment? Love the Lord. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's the greatest commandment. He wants you. All of you. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's to have a personal love relationship with God. So that's the scripture I'm going to be in today. That um, I want to just kind of dissect just that one scripture. So Matthew 22 Verse 36 through 38. <clears throat> it says, Teacher, they're talking to Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all of your mind. And Mark adds strength in the book of Mark. This is the first and greatest commandment. If Jesus says this is the greatest commandment, then we should probably look at it. Yeah. We should probably know it. Right? Something worth knowing, something worth meditating on. And there's a lot of... There's not a lot of commentary on the scripture. I remember when I was studying this, I was like, really wanted like research on it, and there's not because it just it's like pretty cut and dry, right? Like just love the Lord with all of you is in essence what it's saying. So a lot of scholars they're like, it's no, there's no reason to break it up because this is basically saying like this is all of you, right? But I feel like if God gives details, He's a very detailed, right, in how He speaks to us, and I'm a very detailed person, then like. Let's look at the details, right? Let's analyze it a little bit. I think it's worth it. Um, I really want to just flesh it out and see how it, it applies to us practically. So he says to love him with all your heart. What is your heart? And it's funny because you opened up with that scripture um, this morning. What was it? Um, if, we, if we keep iniquity in our heart. Yeah. Yeah. Cherish the iniquity. Cherish. That's cherish. what I was looking for. We cherish iniquity in our heart, right? Our heart is where it's it's basically like your seat of emotions. Yeah. Right? My husband's not here. Aww. I was gonna say, turn to turn to the person next to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Your heart. Like think about that. That's where you, you where you cherish things. Yes. Right? Sin, God, people, whatever the case. This is your you the seat of your emotions is your heart. Right? It's where your affections are. Right? What does the Bible say? Where your treasure is, there your heart, there's your heart. Right? If you, I'll give you a tip if you want to do it. 
I did it, and I don't like it. <laughs> Go look at your bank statement. <laughs> Go look at your bank statement and see where the majority of your money goes to. Because where your treasure is, there's your heart. Right? It's what we put into and invest. Right? It's what we give to. It's what we give of. <clears throat> Man, y'all are wrestling around a little bit. Should we just like do it now and call it out? Like open up your checkbook and look now? No? Mm -hmm. We could have like group therapy? No? Yeah? No, really like cobbles. Like I was like, oh, this is... <laughs> Panda Express! Like, <laughs> right? It's where your affections are. That's, that's where you'll find it, right? Where we're putting our money. Where do you put your time? Where do you give your time? Right? If it's the Candy Crush, I'm saying that because I like Candy Crush. <laughs> right? Where do you put your time? That's that's where your heart is. That's where your heart is. Actually, you can even see what comes out of your mouth. What does it say? It shows what's in the heart. Right? So, this is saying, love the Lord your God with your heart. Right? How are you investing? Your desires, your passion. Right? When you buy that rose on Valentine's Day, why? It's, for, it's your heart, it's your passion, it's your affection. You are completely faithful and devoted to God. That's what he wants. You will do anything for him. He has your heart. And this is similar to the type of being in love or in marriage, right? And I love that about um, how, how it describes the, the covenant with God, like how he describes us as his bride and how he describes us as, you know, a wedding when we go to, I mean, think about, that's how he looks at the relationship with us, right? This is where your time would be called into, your investment. This is where you come home, right? It makes no sense. Think about if, if, you're, if you're married and you never go home, but you have that little sign that says home is where the heart is, <laughs> right? No, this is where you, you, you show up. Yes. You come home. You say something to your spouse, right? That's where your heart is. Will you cook supper? Oh, let me leave that one. Panda Express. <laughs> Take care of that. <laughs> no, I do cook supper. Right? And, I, and, I, and we do the things that, like, I don't cook something that Jenner doesn't like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that is where our heart is. And this is how it is with God. We understand this in a human capacity, but we don't understand it in a spiritual capacity. You know, everything in our life shapes up to spiritual principles, right? Jesus used parables. He used the time of the day, the, the farming, and the things like that to explain stuff to us. We understand it like that. This is where you're thinking about that person during the day, right? I'm going to text, like, you know, Junior will tell you, I hope you have a good day. Why? Because I came across his mind during the day. Yeah. This is what God wants. We can do it with people who, who are going to let us down. But God says, I want you to do that with me. Right? And honestly, out of that will flow you treating your spouse and texting your spouse yes. and doing all that. All, all of that will flow. It will flow to loving those weird kids last night. Just kidding. <laughs> You know, it'll, it'll flow. It'll flow out of that. Where's your heart? Love him with your heart, your passion, your devotion. And then it says, we're to love God with all of our soul. All of our soul. This is really the deepest part of who you are. You know, your soul's going to be the one with God. This is who you actually are who you really are. I think of it like your personality. Like who, like, oh, that's Bobby. My soul, the personality, like who, the depths of who I am. Yeah. What makes you you? Okay, but not, I'm not saying the one that looks cute right now. I'm talking about the real you. Yeah. The, one, the one that's at home where nobody's watching. That's the real you. Because we can dress it up and dress it down and yes. do all the things. And honestly... It's even hard to say, like, when no one's watching, because with social media, like, everybody's watching. We do everything to watch, right? Everything's watching. But that's not, it's not real. 
the real you. God wants you to, you, we love God with all of our soul, the real part of us, the actual us, right? Not the one that we dress up for people, right? Our own personality. <clears throat> Not the one who acts a certain way for a certain motive. You know how you have your professional voice at work? And then you have your mom voice or whatever, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> when you're yelling at the kids. Who are you if there was no consequences or stipulations, right? Or worry about what people would say or think. Man, if you could get out of that, all of us, we all, all of us deal with that. If you could get out of that, man, and be who you really were, man, God would use that. God would use it. He wants you to love him with who you are, not some phony version of yourself. Come on. Amen. God does not want you as someone else. God does not want you as someone else. Like I said before, God is very detailed, right? He knows the number of hairs on our head. He created you very specifically. If he wanted us all to be robots, well, then that's what we would do. He's, a, he's relational, remember? He want, you know how, like, when you look at your kids, like, my two kids are, are different, right? They're very different. And I look at them, and I'm like, oh. right? Like, they're my, that's how God looks at us. Right? It doesn't matter quirkiness. It doesn't matter, like, weird. It doesn't matter, like, all the things. That's not, I'm not talking about my kids anymore. I was talking about other people's kids. <laughs> God loves us for us, no matter, no matter. None of us even have the same, same fingerprint. Now, what kind of God is that? That's right. God knows everything, and it all matters. And I can't imagine how heartbreaking it is to knit us in the womb so intricately and then watch as we try to change and cover up all the parts of who we are. He wants you to love him with your soul, your personality. God made you that way. What does he want to do with it? Right? Love him with your soul, your personality. He made you that for a reason. If you are good at something or have a natural lean to of something, God made you that way. Love him with it. Like, I'm an introvert. I'm super introverted, believe it or not, right? I could be alone all the time. I could. <clears throat> I could be alone, like, on my couch with a remote. <laughs> COVID time. Like, that was fine. But then there's pressure, right? You're like, oh, got to be more loud. Oh, got to be more social. Oh, got to be more. No, God designed you a certain way for a reason. Right? I overthink. Y'all don't use this on me, okay? I'm, t I'm telling y'all stuff. I analyze stuff. Right? But then all of a sudden, coming to my purpose of what I knew God told me to do, man, and it all works out beautifully for me. Right? I get to be in an office space by myself, one-on-one, -on -one, with deep conversations with people. Over, like, literally, for a living, get to analyze and overthink <laughs> how people think. Don't get rid of that. You will miss out. Other people will miss out. God will miss out. He's created you for a reason. Love Him with your soul. And what does it say, mind? Let's talk about the mind. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. I can tell you we do not, do not pay enough attention to this. As Christians, non-Christians, whatever way, we do not pay enough attention to this. And what I find it interesting is that Jesus actually added this one. Like, I'm not a theologian by any means, but what I can tell you is in Deuteronomy, when the commands are given, my Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. But when you get to the Gospels, Jesus includes mine. And I don't know, but I'm just imagining, right? Because Jesus knew how everything was going to be. As time has passed and we have become to know so much, we know now more than we have ever known. Ever. Because I literally can pull out my phone and find the answer. Right? I've never known that much. And so as time has gone by, I can imagine Jesus saying, like, as this happen is as this is happening, make sure that you're loving me with your mind. 
make sure you love me where, with your mind. Where do people get caught up and hindered in their faith philosophy? Deep levels of thinking. Intelligence, right? Higher thinking. Theoretical approaches. It's so much harder for a person who is an intellectual to believe and sur surrender to the Lord. It just is. It just is. Why? Because God's ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. So then all of a sudden we're like, no, nope, can't understand that, can't get it, it can't be true. No, you just can't, you can't. Spiritual things cannot be known by unspiritual people, no. right? It, it doesn't. And God's ways, sometimes the math just doesn't math. Right. It just doesn't. I don't know how I give so much of my money to the church and my bills are paid. That There's some things we cannot understand. I don't, I don't understand the scripture that says, you know, uh, those who, who water will themselves be watered. That doesn't make sense. If I'm giving myself away, I had a friend the other day that said, man, we give so much of ourselves. It's like we're giving pieces of ourselves. And she had read it in a book. And I said, that's not biblical. The Bible said those who water will themselves be watered. See, those are principles that we can't understand unless you live in the spiritual world, right? You understand the Bible. And so intellectualism and and we got to be so careful with our mind. <clears throat> and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being an intellectual. I feel like I'm an intellectual. I love knowledge. I love research. God made your mind. Use it. God made your mind. Use it. But if I did not love the Lord with my mind, I would use it for evil. Come on, amen. Right? We would use our intellect, we would use the things that we know for complete evil. And people do it all the time, right? But look, psychology, science, that, God owns that. He made your mind. He created you. He created the world. Science, the plant, He created it, right? Use it to love Him. And yeah, we can say I'm a Christian, so I don't do any of that. Like, I'm just me. I'm not, like, I don't get into all that. Okay, but let's go a little bit more every day. What does your thinking look like? What does your everyday thinking look like? Because every single person in here thinks yes. something. Are you loving the Lord with your mind? Where are your thoughts? Right? It's the same like the bank account. Whatever your thoughts are on... That's where your heart is at. It's all connected. What are your thoughts like? Are they on him? How, do you even think about God during the day? Are they on whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's of good report? Whatever you believe, that's what it's going to be like. Right? What is uh, Junior, a mm, couple weeks ago, I guess, he talked about conversation matters. Mm -hmm. Right? And... Um, I think he used that, um, I could just get them all mixed up at this point, but he used where the people were, were going to spy out the land, mm -hmm. right? Okay. He pop quizzes me sometimes. And what did they came? The 12 spies, two came back with a good report. Mm -hmm. They were the only ones that made it. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? What are you believing? Love the Lord your God with your mind. If you're not, if you're not believing this and you're not... Thinking on the things that the Bible says to you, you're not going to make it. Because it's going to... Two people can grow up in the same situation, the same uh, difficult situation, the same family dynamics that set them up for failure, but one of them will make it and one of them will not. That's right. That's and it is your mind. That's right. And so that's what God says. Love me with your mind, your thoughts, your belief system. Change your life. Do a study on how you are to think. The Bible talks so much about it. I can't go over it all today. That's a whole message in itself. But look up scripture. Get a book by a Christian author. Counseling to process the experiences you have had that have made you think and believe certain things that are not true. It's our experiences that make us believe things. Right? It's what we go through. It's our experiences. It's things that people have said. Sometimes we've got to shred all that off and say, okay, what is true? What is actually true? And love the Lord, our God, with our mind and be intentional about it. Because he wants all of you. Can you imagine your spouse or whoever you love? Can you imagine only giving? Okay, I'll put my thoughts on you, but I'm not going to come home to you. 
Okay, I'll cook for you, but I'm not going to speak to you. <laughs> right? There's no wholeness in a relationship without all of it. That's right. He doesn't just want us to have this love affair relationship with him and spend time with him and come to church every day and serve him, but then go to bed thinking wrong thoughts. God's probably not for me. That doesn't make any sense. He wants all of it. <clears throat> you have to know truth. That's the only way to do it. You have to know the Bible. You just have to know truth. The Bible says those who set their mind on the Lord have perfect peace. Okay, and just for good measure, I know it doesn't say strength in Matthew, um, where I just read it, but it does say it in Deuteronomy and Mark, so let's just take it into account as well. It says, love the Lord your God with your strength. With your strength, with your abilities. What can you do? I can sit in the room and hear people's deepest struggles and help them. I can do it. I serve the Lord like that. I can half do piano. I serve the Lord like that. Right? Can't run after these kids too much, but I can do. I can make a kid. I can buy some stuff for a kid to do a saran wrap ball. I can do that. What can you do? What can you do with your strength, your abilities to serve the Lord? The Bible even says that He gives us the ability to generate wealth. So when we tithe, we're loving the Lord with our strength mm -hmm. and our heart, right? And in your mind, because if you start saying, ah, listening to people like, oh, they just want your money, right? It has to all come full circle. Yes. God has given you capabilities, whether that is that we have no physical handicaps, that I can get up and do something so we can do a job, or that he has opened a door for opportunity to do something. To serve him, to serve people. We can get out of bed or off the couch and serve God by serving others, studying his word, diligently planning and stewarding a ministry well. We do that with our strength. We can take care of our bodies so that we have the energy to chase these kids. Yes. We can take care of our mind, most overlooked. We can take care of our mind, our thought process. That, that's where it's at. Your mind will actually create somatic symptoms in your body. Yes. Practical things like getting good sleep, eating well, drinking water, that's spiritual. That's spiritual. Love God with your strength. Everything is going to flow out of this. If you are loving God with all these parts of you, you're going to love others well. You Do you ever feel irritable? <laughs> if you don't feel good, you cannot love others well. No. Right? When we're overwhelmed or we're stressed out, what what's the first thing that happens? Our kids don't get taken care of as much. Our spouse gets yelled at. Right? We don't go to church. I ain't messing with them. You know, we got to take care of ourselves, right? Love and, and love God with our strength and our capabilities, which means taking care of ourselves as well. That's how you're going to find your calling and purpose. Serving the Lord with your strength. Trying something out. What can I do? Let me see what happens. You know, for the summer internship, these kids had to do every single thing, whether they wanted to or not. I mean, I didn't force anybody, but I mean, kind of. It was insinuated. Right? Some said, like, I don't want, like, I don't want to do the door. I don't want to greet, greet the people. That freaks me out. And I said, well, try it anyway. Mm -hmm. And what happened? It, it was so funny because the things that, the, that they didn't want to do and were scared of are the things that they enjoyed the most. Yeah. But it holds us back, right? It holds us back. So if you do these things and you love the Lord, your God, with your heart and your mind and your your strength, you will walk right into your calling and purpose. If you're not holding that back, you're going to be strong, you're going to be healthy, you're going to wholeheartedly serve the Lord. 
Because the deal is you will never be able to remain obedient to God if it's just all external. You can show up. If it's just all on the outside is what I mean. You can show up and you can sit here. You can do all the things. You, it is unsustainable unless it's from in here. That's right. Unless it's from in here. That's right. Unless it comes from internally. You can put on a show, but only for so long. Right? You'll never be able to remain, remain obedient to God if it's just all external. It has to be internal. We can do all kinds of things, but none of it matters unless it's flowing out of a sincere love for God. And so with this, I hope that I provided you with like a checklist, basically. A checklist that you can kind of consult with yourself. Pop open that checkbook later when you're tempted to do that. If you're not scared, don't be scared. Consult with the Lord. Consult with yourself. Consult with your family. <laughs> Think of all you do, all who you are, and see if it's loving the Lord. Right? And there's going to be an area that you're going to find. Like, oof, I need to do that. That's good. We should look at the Bible, and that's the whole point, and be like, oh, that's something. You know what? Things would be better if I did that. Right? You're going to find it. Love the Lord. He has commanded it, but he doesn't command us to do things because he wants to show his power. He is quite the opposite of that. He shows his power in very humble, sacrificial ways. For instance, Jesus. Right? He commands things out of his love for us so that it will be well with us, so that there's a result. And the result of loving God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength is that you will walk straight into your purpose, calling into whatever the Lord wants to do. Everything flows out of it. You just keep the main thing the main thing. As you're going along your day, just do that checklist, like where's my heart at, where's my mind at. It'll work for your marriage too, by the way. But make sure that, and with people, with church, with business, all of these things, it starts. you got to have your foundation first. And then all those things, what does it say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things, all the other things will be given. Come on. Because you'll be able to do it. Yeah. Amen. Your mind will be right. Your body will be right. Your heart will be right. Your every, everything. It's, it, it really is like exercising. Like if you, if you have all the things, then you can do all the things. You know? But this is in a way that won't just be physical. This is in a whole way. You know, so use that as, as a checklist to go about your day and say, like, okay, where's my mind? Where's my heart? Do that as when you wake up your prayer, right? How to get in, in focus and tune with the Lord. Okay, let me check my mind. I want to love you with my mind. What are the thoughts I've been thinking? Okay, let me check my heart. Where, where have my affections been? I know I sent that girl some roses. But how have I shown you, Lord, how much I love you? What have I given to you? You know, and, and make a check. What am I doing? What am I doing? Did, am I watching Netflix all day? And there's nothing wrong with sitting on your couch. I like that too, right? To de de decompress. But like, is, is that where my day has gone? Is that where my strength has gone? How have I given something to the Lord? How have I served his heart and his people, his kingdom? Right? And use that as a checklist. And so I just, I know this is just simple stuff. I want you to be able to remember this one verse. And keep it at the forefront of your mind because it's a, it's a verse to live, to live by. Um, <clears throat> we are early today, and just this morning, like in praying, um, I really did feel like I do not want to not get. I was just going to pray for y'all, but I don't want to give miss an opportunity. Um, if there's someone that, for one, if there's someone that doesn't know Jesus in the way that I described here. Like, I want you to come. I want to pray. I want to just agree with you and say, hey, um, not that I want you at you. <laughs> like, hey, let's let's get together on this. Um, how can we help? Like, let's meet together here with Jesus and, and ask him to help. Um, ask him to come into your heart. Oh, think about that. It's salvation. He comes into your heart. Right? He changes yeah. things. And what do we do? Believe with our mind. Mm -hmm. Right? It all comes from that. Um, so I want to give that opportunity, and then also if there's an area, if you kind of made your checklist and there's an area that you see and you want to ask the Lord for help, um, I invite you to come up here too. And I can pray with you. If you stand here, I'll pray with you. If you come over here, that'll let me know that you're just going to talk to Jesus today. Um, 
You got it. Amen. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for that.